and welcome to my channel. This is part three of our series of rounds. If you miss videos one and two, you can check them out on my channel. During this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make shiplap and herringbone circles. Creating a shiplap circle is actually very simple and the best thing about it is that it can be made with scraps and you can make it in any color combination and diameter that you wish. To create my shiplap circle, I'm going to use one by threes and one by twos. You could also use one by fours, even one by fives. You can use whatever width of wood you want and create your own pattern of where you want your slats to be. So I'm just going to put mine where I want them and then I'm gonna push them together. During part one of the series, I showed you how I created this cardboard protractor. I'm going to use it again for this part. What I wanna do is find the center of this wood slatted area that I've created. And you wanna make sure that the number that you choose for your diameter that you can spin it all the way around. So if my number is eight, I wanna make sure that I don't go off of the wood at eight all the way around, which looks good. So I know that I'm in my middle part and I'm just going to very lightly hammer in my nail just a tiny little bit stay in place while I use my protractor and then I'm going to use a writing utensil and draw my circle all around. Now I have a beautifully round 16 inch wide circle and I'm going to take each of the slats that I've drawn on with my pencil lines to my scroll saw and cut out along all of the lines I created. I'm going to start from the top and work my way to the bottom replacing them after I cut each one so that I know exactly where they go. each of the slats to make sure they're super smooth before sanding and painting. Now that my circle is completely sanded, I'm going to do the fun part of the project, which is getting to design what each of the slats are going to be. And I want this one to look a little bit more beachy, so I'm going to use some blue and gray tones with white and a classic gray stain. Once these are dry, I'm gonna flip them over, paint the back sides and the edges. I'm going to be heavily distressing this circle because I want it to look really beachy. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush with a little bit of white paint on some of my colored slats and then distress really, really heavily. To dry brush, I've just put a bunch of white paint on my brush and I'm just going to wipe off most of my paint onto a shop rag or a piece of paper towel. And then I'm going to lightly slide without really applying any pressure over top of each of my panels that I want to have this look. And I'm gonna maybe put it a little bit heavier on some areas and not as heavy on others so that I can get it to look uneven. Next step is that I'm going to heavily distress my round. Now that my circle is complete and I'm all done distressing, I'm going to push it all together. And I like the beachy reclaimed wood look that I've given it. I don't wanna use a piece of paper underneath because I'm going to be wood gluing it together and I don't want it to stick at the end. So I'm using a piece of parchment paper or even wax paper would work to put underneath your work surface. I'm going to use my Gorilla Glue to put this together. You could also use a Craig jig. If you were gonna make this into a tray, I would suggest that method, but just as a decor piece, wood glue holds perfectly fine. If you have a large framing clamp, it would be a good idea to clamp it together to hold it nice and tight. If you don't, I suggest leaving this for 24 hours to let it firmly hold. While we're waiting for the shiplap circle to dry, I wanna show you how I make my herringbone circles. This herringbone circle that I created is 14 inches in diameter and I use 24 one by three by fours. So now I have 24 perfectly cut spaces and I'm going to start designing my circle. To create the herringbone pattern, you need to align your spaces so that you have one on an angle and then one going up the other way, kind of like you're making a zigzag. Before I actually start designing my herringbone pattern, I've actually used a piece of my contact paper and I've taped the sticky side up onto my table so that when I put my pieces down, they won't shift all over while I'm trying to draw my circle on them. So I'm going to create the herringbone pattern and you're kind of creating a zigzag pattern when you make herringbone. 
Now that my herringbone pattern is all laid out, I actually ended up using 25 one by two by fours. If your circumference of your circle is larger, you're going to need more rectangles. Now I wanna make sure that I start from the center point of my design and I'm going to use my number seven on my cardboard homemade protractor and I'm going to draw my circle all the way around. My next step is to take each of my outer edge pieces and take them to my scroll saw to cut out the lines I've created. So the next part gets a little tiny bit tricky, but you wanna make sure that you stain the entire surface, front, back, and sides, um, and take out each individual piece. Because if you don't do this and you just rub stain on this once it's glued together, you're gonna get goopy, yucky stain all stuck in between. So it gives it a really finished polished look when you take out each individual piece, stain it, and then put it back in together to be glued. So now we're gonna pretend that we let this fully stained piece dry for about 24 hours. And then I'm going to lightly distress each piece and we're going to glue it all back together. I'm gonna let this sit overnight and then we'll be able to lift it straight up off my contact paper and it won't have gotten stuck. Leave a comment down below on which one you like better, the classic gray or the walnut stain. I hope this video inspires you to make your own shiplap and herringbone rounds. Thank you so much for watching this three-part series. I've had so much fun making this series for you that I've decided to make a fourth bonus video. During my bonus video, I'm going to show you how you can bring your rounds to life. Comment down below which was your favorite style of rounds in this series. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and subscribe to my channel.